appropriate temperatures beginning to fall off a little bit across the region. That's expected though as we head into the night. 87 right now with a dew point running in the mid 60s. So a little bit drier air has moved in for the day. It'll hang around for the next 24 to 36 hours. Rain returns Friday with heavy rain potentially on the way this weekend. We'll have all that in my full forecast coming up in the next 20 minutes. In high definition, this is 41 NBC News at 6. Good evening and thanks for joining us for 41 NBC News at 6. I'm Shelby Coates. And I'm Tucker Sargent. Our top story tonight at 6. The man accused of killing a woman last week now faces another charge. That's right. Bibb County investigators questioned and then arrested 39-year-old Jeremiah Waller Jr. for the shooting death of 30-year-old Patricia Gamboa. Deputies found her body in a van on Spring Street next to the I-16 bridge last week. Well, after charging him with murder last week, he's now charged with feticide. Investigators were notified Tuesday that Gamboa was pregnant. Well, a Monroe County deputy is recovering after jumping into a fleeing vehicle to capture a wanted suspect. It happened this morning just after 930 on I-75 North between the Rumble Road and Forsyth exits. The Sheriff's Office in Monroe County says a deputy stopped Darian Ponder due to a no tag display. After running his information, the deputy learned that Ponder was wanted in two Georgia counties for fleeing and eluding an obstruction of law enforcement officers. The deputy then told Ponder to step out of the vehicle because he was being placed under arrest. That's when Ponder got out, got into an argument with the deputy and then jumped back in his car. As the deputy jumped in after Ponder, the car began to accelerate, then crashed into the concrete barrier. The deputy sustained minor injuries while Ponder suffered a broken ankle. Deputies say marijuana was also found inside the vehicle and on Ponder. He's charged with multiple drug and traffic violations. The Georgia Department of Early Care and Learning awarded transformation grants to help children ages five and younger. 41 NBC's Elizabeth Gutierrez spoke with two local agencies who received some of the grant dollars to find out how they plan to use the money right here in Middle Georgia. Out of the 34 organizations that participated in the grant process, only eight were awarded up to $75,000. In addition to the impactful work that's going to happen in these eight communities, we're most excited about the lessons learned that organizations across the state will be able to benefit from. Two of the organizations awarded a transformation grant are from Middle Georgia. One is the Communities and Schools Program in Baldwin County. Lori Smith, director of the Early Learning Center, says they will use the money to help children who have a parent in prison. We're going to make a, a kit for families that will help them with their stress. Um, it'll have some activities and things like that that they can do in there. Um, a lot of what we're going to do is going to revolve around some books on social and emotional learning. Smith says the kits will go to the parent in prison and the other families. She says their main goal is to get families and children talking and spending time together. United Way of Central Georgia also received a grant. According to the organization, the money will go towards reaching out to the Hispanic community. We want to put someone in the home that can speak their language, understand their culture, and then understand their needs as well, and give them access to the resources. A lot of them don't know where to go to get those resources so they can better themselves, better their children, give them better opportunities, especially in, as it, it relates to education. The grant will allow them to help through the Parents as Teachers Home Visiting Program. It will be the first time they have a bilingual person to help. In Macon, Elizabeth Gutierrez, 41 NBC News. Uh, both recipients have begun the process to implement the grants, and they say they hope to see a positive impact in their community. Well, in Houston County, the Purdue Foundation helped fund the purchase of new thermal imaging cameras for the fire department. 41 NBC's Ariel Schiller tells us how many cameras were replaced and how the grant came about. Thanks to a grant from the Purdue Foundation, the Houston County Fire Department was able to start the process of replacing life-saving equipment. Houston County Fire Chief Christopher Stoner says the department reached out to the Purdue Foundation earlier this year about its need to replace the existing thermal imaging cameras. He says the cameras weren't operating at the capacity they needed them to. The cameras help firefighters see through heat and smoke, locate people trapped inside burning buildings, and find hot spots. The foundation awarded them more than $12,000 to replace two cameras. We have a volunteer fund that they do fundraisers every year for that we were able to pull two more out of, and then we'll pull two out of the 
the regular county budget this year. So without Purdue's support, there's no way we could have completed that that project. Kim Nache is the executive director of the Purdue Foundation. She says they were honored to help the fire department purchase the cameras. Looking at this type of equipment, knowing what life safe, life saving and injury preventing capabilities these kind of cameras really do have, it, it's kind of like a, an easy answer for these uh, fire departments that are just so important to our organization. Chief Stoner says he's thankful for the grant from the Purdue Foundation. Without the process being started with Purdue, um, you know, coming to us and saying, here, we'll, we'll help you get this process started. It would have never been able to, to come through the way it has. In Houston County, Ariel Schiller, 41 NBC News. And the fire department received the grant money back in February and replaced all six cameras, and they're currently on fire trucks now. President Biden and Russia's Vladimir Putin finally came face to face today for their highly anticipated summit in Switzerland. President Biden telling Putin his agenda is not against Russia, it's for the U.S. Putin called his American counterpart an experienced leader, but he dodged responsibility for a string of charges. NBC's Alice Barr reports. Face to face and staring down a host of thorny issues, President Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin speaking for roughly three hours today before holding separate press conferences. I think there's a genuine prospect to significantly improve the relations between our two countries without us giving up a single solitary thing based on principle and our values. On the whole, we spoke the same language. The shorter than anticipated meeting covering ground from Russian election interference to aggression in Ukraine and Russian based cyber attacks targeting America's critical infrastructure. President Putin denied any involvement, instead, accusing the U.S. What do the state organs of Russia have to do with that? We are encountering the same threats. President Biden said they agreed to talks about reining in the cyber threat and he vowed to respond to any future attacks. He knows I will take action. On the question of human rights abuses and jailing political opponents, Putin deflecting blame, making a false equivalence to arrests after the deadly January 6 siege of the U.S. Capitol. They're being called domestic terrorists. That's a ridiculous comparison. It's one thing for literally criminals to break through cordon, go into the Capitol, kill a police officer, and be held unaccountable. And it is for people objecting and marching on the Capitol and saying, you are not allowing me to speak freely. The two sides did agree to begin nuclear arms control negotiations and return each nation's ambassadors to their posts. President Biden calling this just the start of restoring relations, saying it's clear neither country wants another Cold War. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. Still ahead on 41 NBC News at 6. To help celebrate National Pride Month, the Washington Memorial Library has provided books to teach people about the LGBTQ plus community. The tells after the break. Get news anytime on 41NBC.com and the 41NBC News app. 41NBC. Clear. Accurate. To the point. The Kelly Clarkson Show. Weekdays at 3 on 41NBC. Tonight. Katie Ledecky, the greatest female swimmer of all time, is ready to add to her legend. Ledecky is on her way to history. Why am I here? Forget about everything you think you know. There is only you, me, and the truth. Tell me, who are you? Hello, hello. I'm the new guy. Tell me about this epic stuffed crust pizza. It's made with fresh, never frozen dough, hand stuffed with cheese. Good job. All right, you caught me. Here is me. No, I, I knew it was you. Let me hear you say epic stuffed crust. Epic stuffed Fake, mi amor. Mm -hmm. Ice cream? 
Yeah! Okay. Protect your connected devices with advanced security included with Cox Panoramic Wi-Fi. Georgia, we put in the work. We stayed home. We put our lives on hold for the sake of our community. And do you know what our Republican politicians were up to? Members of the Georgia House of Representatives changes the state's election laws. They were busy making it harder to vote, making it easier to intimidate voters and interfere with election results. Instead of prioritizing COVID relief and fully expanding Medicaid, our lawmakers were busy taking away our freedom to vote. Demand your state legislator put Georgians first by fully expanding Medicaid now. When severe weather strikes, count on 41NBC and the 41NBC AccuWeather team to have the very latest live storm updates to keep your family safe. That's what we mean when we say 41NBC is clear, accurate, to the point. In high definition, this is 41NBC News at 6. Oh, welcome back. Macon Bibb Public Works and Solid Waste Departments made their way out to Pleasant Hill this morning to clean up the area. The departments work to mow grass, sweep streets, and even tackle some illegal dumps. The groups have already cleaned up more than 3 million pounds of trash in Macon. It's all part of a continued effort to keep the city clean. Maurice Jackson with Solid Waste says the cleanup is just in time for the Juneteenth historic walking tours through Pleasant Hill that are happening right now.